Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the best teams for Black Swan, and not just only some best teams, I'll also be giving you a variety of team comps. For example, you will hear everyone talking about Kafka, but for those newer players of you out there, or maybe you haven't had lucky enough to get Kafka, I'll be also sharing with you how you can get by with a no Kafka team, and a free-to-play team, and some unorthodox ones that you want to build this character for any of you who really love her design and want to play her to the best of your ability. But of course, first things first, you know we don't waste time with this channel, so let's go ahead and talk about the most popular one so that the majority of you can get value very quickly and then we'll go into more niche team compositions. The first one every one is going like, to talk about is Black Swan and Kafka, but a lot of people won't tell you why actually these two characters work well together. So let's start off from there and then we build upon there. Black Swan is an extremely strong DOT character. She does a lot of her damage uh, by stacking her Akana stacks and stuff like that. If she outs, the stacks remain, dealing even more damage. But the one true downside of this character is she relies on the opponent turns. Let's use Yen Xing as an example because he's the best uh, beat stick. So let's say this is the enemy and I'm like casting like my Akana stacks on him. Uh, what happens is if he doesn't move, like he gets slowed because I have Welt on the same team, for example, you will never proc the damage, the massive amounts of explosive damage that uh, Black Swan does if Yen Ting doesn't move. This is why Kafka actually comes really nicely into the mix because when Kafka has this ability of hers that procs the DOT on the enemies on an instance. So regardless of what team comp you have, you, whether you have slow, you have like some sort of like imaginary break uh, and whatnot, delay on the enemy, you will still get massive value out of this uh, insane DPS, DOT DPS like Black Swan. That is the true reason why they work really well together. Of course, Kafka is synergetic because she also applies a lot of shock on her own, which uh, she benefits from, Black Swan benefits from as well. So that is why another reason, of course. So that aside, now that you've got like the main core idea of how these two play together and how they work to each other's strengths and weaknesses, uh, she procs a lot of DOT, uh, Black Swan procs a lot of DOT, Kafka pops them and vice versa, uh, helping with mitigating enemy speed. The question then becomes, what if you do not have Kafka or you want to play like someone else in this slot, which we'll talk about in the next section. So for this section here, I'm just going to like smack in Kafka here and we'll talk about the pivot and utility because this is probably going to be a really popular comp. For those of you maybe like smaller spenders, you don't have too much resources, I highly recommend the free Esther. Why Esther? Is she provides burn in her basic attacks. When you use her out, she gives speed to both of them. Uh, dance, 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 pushes them up as well and stuff like that. Allowing them to get more energy re uh, restoration on their overall kit. More speed means like more energy relative to the enemy's turns because um, she wants to keep up her out so you can keep up the arcana stacks if the enemy moves slower than your whole team. Kafka doesn't mind moving more often since her follow-up attacks also uh, refresh based on her turn order. If she basic attacks, does burn, she follow ups and whatnot. There is she Esther is basically a really nice character for DOT teams since she buffs attack percentage in an AOE speed, uh, in an AOE also, which generally DOT teams enjoy. They don't really have one character like doing the heavy lifting and whatnot. So Esther is probably my recommendation for the pivot slot. But if you have a little bit more money, a little bit more resources, I do think that a uh, Ronmei will outperform. Although she doesn't give like um, tons of speed buff like Estas 50 flat or even higher, Romy still does like 10% speed buff uh, from one of her talent traces and stuff, which is decent, some amount of buffing. But the main thing about her is she does a lot of break damage, which um, DOT teams do quite a lot of break damage as well, break uh, effect damage instances. Uh, Romy does a lot of damage buffing, for that the whole team requires rest pen also which DOT teams really enjoy she doesn't buff crit at all so there's no like wasted stats on this character uh, I think Ronmei is probably like a better uh, unit to put in the pivot slot but Asta probably will work fine if any of you who don't want to put Ronmei in this team composition so that is for the first three the last one in my opinion like the best character to play will be Huo Huo but of course, it's, I know it's expensive, like one, two, three, four, four expensive characters. Not everyone has that much money, um, which means I want to give you an option to play in the last slot. Uh, in general, I think that you want a very solid, sustained character moving in the direction of a preservation character because preservation characters have the ability to, for example, run a trend of universal market, which gives you the ability to proc DOT on your preservation character as well. So uh, trend of universal market basically skills with defense and it procs burn when enemies hit your unit. So meaning a character like Fire MC draws aggro, you burn the enemy, uh, March 7, Japart, all these characters would work nicely in the last slot. 
and I would say I would favor preservation a little bit more with the new upcoming preservation characters like Adventuring. These are all targets which I think are quite interesting to consider as well, especially if they can use the trend of Universal Market Light Cone for a DOT team. That is my recommendation. Of course, you can play like Natasha, you can play Bailu, Lynx and whatnot, etc. in the last slot. It's quite flexible, but out of all of them, the preservation using Trend of Universal Market and Ho Ho definitely do outperform for uh, DOT teams. I'll, I'll show you a picture of like Trend of Universal Market in a little bit when we are talking about unorthodox comps. So that is for the typical standard build that majority of you Kafka lovers or Kafka havers would have if you're playing a pool for Black Swan. But I know newer players don't have Kafka, which is why I want to go towards this second section here. Maybe you either are unlucky, you didn't get her, you're a new player, you want to save, like Black Swan is your higher priority, and maybe you'll pull Kafka on a rerun, or for some reason, maybe you don't like Kafka's design or whatnot. This section here is giving you an alternative. So, basically, if you do not have Kafka here, you want to play other DOT characters in this slot uh, for now, and I will recommend you play a character either like Sampo or Kuei Naifen. These two characters work really well, even with Kafka teams, so the logic is like more or less the same. You are basically swapping Kafka out for Black Swan. Uh, Windshear is not a competing thing because uh, her proc is Arcana, which is different from Windshear, so they don't like compete with each other's stacks and stuff like that. If you run a double win, it might make you easier to buff uh, with, for example, a Bronya with a certain like uh, same type element kind of light cone penetrating rendezvous but I don't think win I don't think Bronya is like super good because she buffs in terms of like um, crit damage and stuff which DOT teams don't really care about so that's the only downside hopefully in future we get like a win uh, unit as well to buff same type damage I think that would be uh, really nice like a 4 star or something so in a pivot slot same thing you want to run like Esther you can run Esther here you can run a character like Ranmi all these characters work really well if you run the same type, you have the access to Panacony Land of Dreams set. So you could run like Panacony Land of Dreams of majority of them to give you the energy restoration up um, and buffing same type damage. That's one advantage of like running Sampo with Flexon. He can buff her even more as well. Um, Queen Knife increases the enemy's damage that they take, adds in a little bit more burn if you needed that additional uh, burn application on the enemies too to help you get the stacks faster for Arcana. So that is like some options. Of course, as we kind of can tell, uh, having Kafka will definitely make your life a lot easier because as mentioned, the problem with a team without Kafka is that you require the enemies to move fast, which means you generally don't want to play with characters like, well, you don't want to play with uh, characters with speed down, for example, like uh, Dunhung and to some extent even Silver Wolf because these units all have like speed down in their kit which is not very favorable if you can't like force the enemies to proc their DOT. So that is one thing I want to like give a huge caveat for for any of you non-Kafka team players out there. Um, you could consider Freeze as well. Freeze is, although Freeze seems to not make the enemy move at all, once they get like unfrozen, so to speak, the first instance, they actually get pushed up in their second turn a bit quicker. So they get ability to like prop the DOTs much faster. So a Freeze team is a possibility to run if you're planning to play a no Kafka team, which means like Japart, uh, Mark 7, or even a character like uh, Misha might be interesting to consider. Unfortunately, Misha doesn't sustain, of course. So Freeze teams probably a way around it if you don't have Kafka to pop, prop the DOT instantly. And that is for a no Kafka team. We talked about like their downsides and how to get around it. Now I want to talk to you about an unorthodox team. Everyone out there is going to be telling you to play Black Swan in just a specific DPS team. But there will come a day in future when, for example, uh, let's say your team looks like this now and you have a new spanking DPS that comes out in a DOT category. Uh, where does Black Swan go? Is she power crap? And my honest answer is I don't think so because she does defense shred in her kit and increases the amount of damage the enemies take on their turn which is a buff to DOT teams as well. She is, in a sense, a supportive DOT character as well as a very strong DPS character that builds stacks through Arcana. So the two things that I want to point out right now in this unorthodox category which will increase the number of teams that she can play with is first, as we mentioned, the trend of Universal Market. This is a preservation light cone that procs burn when enemies hit that unit. So if you slap this on, for example, Fire MC and Fire MC taunts the enemies, she now uh, Fire MC now becomes a taunter and also at the same time a DOT applier. So you make use of the enemy's turns to like hit you and you apply that burn DOT on them. 
this skills with defense, this light cone skills with defense, so it's really nice as well. So you could play that if you're trying to prop more DOTs and you don't want to run a traditional DOT comp. You want to like maybe run Black Swan as a supportive defense shredder. Her defense shredding, of course, is like not as good as Palace. Uh, but hers is found in her skill like Black Swan's defense shred is found in her skill it's like around half the effectiveness of Palace ultimate but uh, at the same time Black Swan does decent amount of damage on her own and if you have these unorthodox equipment you are able to like more or less run her as the only DOT character while providing some sort of uh, defense shredding for the enemies as well um, and she's also an, an interesting buff to a few characters which I'll talk about in a bit but that is the first Thing that changes a little bit the next one i think would be this light cone here the patience is all you need light cone kafka signature light cone for any of you for some funny reason didn't pull kafka but maybe tried to get this and got it this light cone is insanely strong on black swan because it allows for those of you who can't like remember why it is what makes it unique is that it procs erode which is the equivalent of shock uh, but of course it stacks with shot because it's considered as erode but erode is classified as a shot dot lightning dot which means that black swan uh, when she attacks you are able to prop both lightning dot as well as arcana which counts as wind dot to help you build stacks on her own individually much faster as well and everything else about this light cone this patience is all you need light cone benefits black swan so i think this is the next one which i want to talk about which is an unorthodox build for example if you slap this on her you likely can run her as like a solo DOT kind of thing to act as like a buffer for other characters which includes the like of a character like Clara because for those of you who don't know Black Swan I think increases the damage based on the enemy's turns that they take so if the enemy is attacking you Clara counters is considered as the enemy's turn order and I think this will do massive amounts of damage uh, making uh, uh, Black Swan in a sense like a defense shredder plus a damage buffer for counter teams uh, for example like uh, Clara, for example, uh, characters like Blade, which increases the versatility a little bit on this character since you don't have to force her to be played in a DOT team. She does have some flexibility, especially if you want to play a little bit of Wind. Maybe, for example, you play Black Swan, you play Blade, you play uh, Bronya here to buff Blade, and your last slot here, maybe you play, uh, for example, a character like Lota. So you can run like the bottom team to get an interesting mix. At the same time, Black Swan is shredding enemy defenses, increasing the damage they take on their turn based on like counters and stuff, and still proccing shock on her own. She doesn't really need to care about like, other characters in the team. Uh, of course, you can uh, run like sus uh, defensive characters like March 7 together with Bronya kind of count combo kind of team. I mean, uh, March 7 and Clara and slapping on like the trend of Universal Market. There are many ways to play this character and I don't think I want people to like just be fixated on her as like, a traditional DOT DPS. She is more useful than that, especially if you have these two light cones at your disposal. Um, if any of you who are interested in my thoughts about Patience is all you need. Check out the other video that we just recently did like last week on the channel, which will be very, very useful if any of you are sitting on the fence of getting this light cone. Very versatile. In my opinion, might be even more attractive for its versatility for Black Swan. But um, that's another topic for another video. Uh, and let's talk about the next one. Now that we have kind of like the concepts here and there, let's talk about a bit about the Hyper Carry Comp. So whatever we talked about in the previous section, it all adds up to this section here because all the concepts are very, very similar and her weaknesses, strengths and whatnot snowball from whatever we talked about previously already. But for any of you who just like move to this point, hyper carry is always the interesting point. I'll also give you as much of a summary as I can. What Black Swan wants to do is she wants to build the stacks of Arcana as much as she can and keep it on the enemy target. You can keep it by outing very often using her burst so that you keep the enemies in that state. There are a few ways to get a lot of energy restoration on this particular unit. And let's talk about the easiest one, which is a direct funneling strategy with a character like Huo Huo, with a character like Ting Yun. These two characters uh, buff attack percentage, which is nice for her, since a lot of her damage is going to be coming from attack base. And at the same time, they funnel a lot of energy into your main character here. Ho Ho funnels like 20 something percent. Uh, Ting Yun is like a 40 energy directly into uh, Black Swan. These are all really nice funneling strategies so that she can out as often as possible. And last thought here, you could probably run another like pushing character. Maybe you want to play, for example, a character like Esther. You want to play a character, for example, like uh, Sparkle if you wanted to, if you're pulling for her. Anything that helps you manipulate turn order. Uh, I don't really like Bronya as much and Sparkle because they are like crit damage oriented, but they do turn order manipulation. So that is like the key thing in order to like funnel more energy. But, uh, but let's, let's put them aside since they are 
traditionally known for crit damage. I don't want to like confuse too many people as well. Uh, of course, characters like um, I think uh, Hanya, Hanya also does does push the character up a little bit as well. So these kind of characters, I think, will be really solid. Basically, harmony light units to hyper carry and funnel everything into her. The caveat, as mentioned, to this strategy is you really require, for example, some sort of uh, to get the stacks faster. You want to either have her move more often or maybe like use uh, patience is all you need to have even more DOT on the enemies as well. Uh, Asta applies like some burn with her basic attacks and whatnot, but you want to get the stacks as quickly as possible. So this is one option you can go by. I think this is um, a direct funneling strategy. For anyone who wants an indirect funneling strategy would be running, for example, March 7 to put the shield on Black Swan so that the enemy aggros like a hit. So if you put the, the shield on Black Swan here, enemies will target Black Swan to funnel the energy quicker into her. And especially if you like use other orthodox strategies, for example, like trend of universal market slapping on March 7, here you have a bit of uh, interesting playstyle already on its own. So some options for you to consider as well, uh, for you to run a hyper carry Black Swan if any of you who are running that. Do I think crit is going to be good for her? I don't think so. I think a lot of her damage likely will come from her Arcana multipliers. So getting those stacks up as much as you can and keeping it there is probably going to be pretty important. Um, some of you might be wondering, why not just run a character like Welt and like, slow the enemies down? I think it's possible also to slow the enemy so that you can get her ultimate back up because um, it's always in relation to how fast she gets her burst compared to the enemy. But one thing to consider is if your most of your damage is coming from enemies moving their turn order and you have like a limited turns that the enemy takes in the Memory of Chaos or the Pure Fiction event, Welt actually overall is a damage lowering because you might get the Arcana stacks up but enemies act less um, and that is like something to consider as well so you don't really want to go the angle so just uh, some things for you to consider too and that's like for hyper carry com uh, next up let's just chill now since we talk a lot about the meta and whatnot let's talk a little bit about a waifu team in case any of you want to play waifu some of you might be looking out for this character in the future as well Akron. Uh, i don't want to put a picture here for the sake of not getting any violations but i think uh the traditional waifu team that everyone's talking about is like these three, right? You have Black Swan, you have Akron, you have Kafka. So your Nihility team, this is like one angle of playing it. Super likely going to be very strong because you have a core of Kafka and Black Swan already. Um, and really all you need is just maybe some sustain at the end. Unfortunately, I don't think we have any like or some waifu in the sustain slot. I guess the, the most appropriate one that FBI's won't knock on my door will be like Natasha. I don't even know whether Fushen is considered... I know I'm pretty sure uh, Ho Ho is not, but uh, yeah, I'll just put her half here so that I don't get arrested or anything for making stupid comments. But yeah, probably like this is another option that you can run by. Natasha likely is the best in slot for sustain here. We don't have a female preservation other than like Fire MC. So like some options, I'll just leave it here. But I think in the DPS slot, she likely will work. Uh, Black Swan likely will work really well with Akron. Uh, for a waifu team you can put like Kafka here if you don't want to play Akron you can play like Himiko here who is a waifu as well I think Servile is also another option she does add in a little bit of shock here and there um, to add into the overall mix and yeah pretty much your second slot here in your synergy slot you can fit like most people since Kafka as well as um, Black Swan is going to be like the main core 2 duo kind of thing and um, at this point let's talk about the new player one in the past few sections, every single section has many 5-star characters and it's very easy for experienced players to just keep talking about what is meta, what is good and slapping out everything 5 characters. But at the end of the day, I know some of you who are maybe just joined in Panakani who simply do not have the money and resources to pull all the limited characters or maybe you simply haven't been long enough to experience their banners. This section here is a shout out to all you new players. If any of you experienced players are watching till this point, feel free to leave in the comment below your thoughts as well as we are explaining this to help new players. I'm sure you guys know what it feels like to be a new player too. But anyways, let's get into it. The best character in my opinion will be Esther for a new player to start choosing from. Esther offers burn in her basic attack, speed up in her out and attack uh, buffs for your overall team. She's free. She's very good at E0 already and it's very, very cheap to build. You can pretty much like, slap majority of light cones on her. Super free to play friendly. So my recommendation if you are planning to pull Black Swan is to consider building Esther and slotting her in. She can be slotted into a lot more teams and she, as you can see in the previous section, very well used for DOT teams too. Especially if you want to use like Ronmei for another half and whatnot because you are a newer player. So Esther here, 
big recommendation. The other choice, of course, would probably be Servile. Temporarily, because um, if you don't have Kafka, you want a little bit of DOT. The other free-to-play like source of DOT right now is Servile. She's not going to like scale super well into the endgame, but she's a decent character if you are looking for an AoE Lightning DPS, especially if you don't plan on pulling um, Xingyuan, or maybe because you just missed Kafka's banner, you didn't join in time, uh, didn't get enough pulls. Uh, Servile is a pretty good re uh, replacement for Kafka for in terms of a shock application for a really long time. Of course, if you are lucky enough to pull Gui Nifen on her banner, Gui uh, Black Swan's banner, you can use Gui Nifen instead of Servile. I think Gui Nifen is likely going to be a little bit better. And in version 2.0, you will get a free banner where you can choose one character out of all of them, all the four characters on, uh, like on the banner or something like that. I highly recommend you choose Sampo if you are joining in 2.0 for that event. Um, in this case, I'll consider like these two units as free to play because version 2.0 has a special event and Grey and Iphone is like, on Black Swan's banner. But I'll put Servile up here for any of you who are joining afterwards like uh, and maybe didn't get lucky or missed the event or some sort. Um, that is like, some options that I want to give you. For utility, um, pretty clear. I think I'll run with Natasha here or Lynx. I can't remember exactly whether Lynx was free. For the most part, you will likely want a good single sustain for to carry your account. March 7 and Fire MC, you will find that it's not enough to solo sustain if you're a new player. So I would recommend you go for Lynx or Natasha. These two characters scale well into late game if you don't plan on pulling a limited 5-star sustain unit. So I would recommend you invest some resources into them. But anyways, guys, this is my recommendations for best team form from Black Swan. We do this every single patch, really. So if you're interested and you like this format, do like and subscribe and check out our other videos which you might be interested in 2.0 content that we are making slowly as well. And see you in the next video.